Welcome back everyone. We are going to be doing some titanium anodizing and I'm sure you guessed that from the video title. So what we're going to do is walk you through the process of how to do this with home stuff. Um, what you need to get to the store, what you have to have and, and basically how you do it. Then we're also going to talk about the stuff that you don't get at the normal store. Um, extra pieces that you'd have to order online or acquire from somewhere to achieve better results and we're going to kind of compare those results. So first let's kind of just set this lab up and then we're going to go through the material that we're going to be using. So what you want to do is go to Walmart or a dollar store somewhere and buy two plastic containers. The first thing you want to do is don't drill any holes or punch anything through it at all. You want to keep it solid because it's going to hold our liquid. So that's the first container. The second container, take a drill and drill a bunch of holes through the bottom of it. Try not to break it in a couple areas here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've actually, it did decide to crack. Get something that's kind of durable, um, just because if you're going to use it a lot, it's going to crack over time with all the holes that are in the bottom. So what we want to do is put them together, and we're basically just using the top one as sort of like a strainer, and the bottom one is just basically a bowl. So now what we're going to do is take distilled water, just regular distilled water you can get at the store. Um, I have done this with regular water, and the results are... Pretty good, but distilled water does work better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this up just to enough to where we uh, can cover our parts. So um, that was a little that was left over from the last one. So I'll go ahead and use some distilled water out of the new one. And just like I said, we're just gonna fill it up to, to the point of where we can cover our parts. We don't have to have any more than that. And we don't want it to go all over the place. So let's just leave it right there. So what we want to do now is prime our water. And what we're going to do is, there's lots of different companies out there selling different kits, but basically Borax um, will do exactly what you want it to do. There's a couple of concrete cleaners. Um, I think it's MSP that will do the same thing. I could be telling you the wrong name on that, but Google it and you'll find something. Um, Borax is pretty much everywhere. So what you want to do is just take a scoop of it and put it in here and stir it up. And basically what we're doing is super saturating the liquid, so it's not going to hold any more borax. So we don't have to fill this whole thing up with borax or put any more than what's required. We basically just need to put enough in there to the point of where the liquid will not dissolve the borax that we're putting in anymore. And you're going to actually see borax sitting on the bottom of the container. Um, once you start seeing that on there, you're pretty much done. So that's kind of how you prep the thing. Now, one of the things we didn't talk about was the positive and negative leads and how they work. The, the way they work is you want to have, um, the right way to do it with titanium anodizing is you want to have a piece of titanium that you're using as your ground. So in this particular case, I did buy a kit um, that it got, kind of got me started and there's a plate on the bottom and then I trimmed off a piece of the plate and connect it to itself <clears throat> so that way I could use a ground clamp to it. So basically, <clears throat> you don't have to do this. You can use wire. There's um, lots of companies out there just selling wire like this. That you can get this kind of heavy duty gauge wire and you could just coil it up and put it on the bottom. You're not really necessarily required to use a plate, but the idea is, is to have a, <clears throat> a larger ground than you have positive. So that's what we've done. So I went ahead and hooked up the power supply to the wall. I've hooked up the ground to the ground side, hooked it onto my clamp. I know it shows a red wire. I apologize. Um, those are some of the only wires I had, but I've, it's pretty simple to keep track of it because it's the only one that we're not going to be unhooking. And that's what we're going to do. So everything's ready. The only thing we don't know is voltages and where we need to be. You can go online and look at your charts, but it just so happens to be that I know kind of where we want to be, which is right around... 27 to 29, maybe even 30 volts to achieve the blue color that we're going to be after for this video. So on my paper, it's not really a paper, I guess, it's a piece of, a, piece of aluminum, I've written out that we're titanium anodizing, that we're doing four different bat batches here today. We're going to do raw, and what that means is we're going to take our sample pieces, we're not going to do anything to them except for clean them and then anodize them. This is very similar to what you'd be getting at home. Um, there would not be using an etch etching process, you're basically just... Um, using raw titanium to, to hopefully achieve what you're after. We have liquid etch, which um, I'm going to show you here in a second that we're going to be doing. We have 
tumbler etch, which is actually more of like a scratching of the surface of the uh, of the retainers that we're going to be using. And then we have an, an etch that would be tumble plus liquid. So we're kind of getting four different examples here today. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this over here. And before we conclude this video, I'll take you guys outside. We'll actually go over all of them, but we'll put them on the corresponding area of the uh, the map, the little chart here. That way we can keep track of what came from what and the results, what came from, from which uh, which process. So on to our parts. So <clears throat> what we have here is um, valve retainers that are out of motors. These are titanium. They're usually a grade 5, 6A LV4. Um, and basically these are pace racing, I think. Some of them might even be marked. I have a batch here that came out of a bucket that I acquired, and then I have a batch here that went that ran through the actual um, tumbling etching process. So we've got some that are untouched, and we have some that are tumbler etched, essentially. So this here, if you're curious what this is, this is just Windex. This is just basically a cheap version of a degreaser. You could get a degreaser, a real degreaser, but at the end of the day, I just find that this works just as well as anything that would be a quality name. So just pour some Windex in there, don't worry about it. The etch here, I'm not gonna tell you what this is, just like I'm not gonna go into detail about the tumbling etch that I'm using, because once again, I do sell this as a service. So I can't give all of my secrets away, but I do wanna show you some results. So what we're gonna do is, I've already made up a batch of this. It looks kinda like a, I don't know, you might not catch it on camera, but it kinda looks like a brownish color a little bit to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this up and we're gonna use that as our etch. Now I am using a glass container to do that in, just because I don't want it to uh, wear a hole through the side of anything. So that is our, our actual liquid etch. So the other thing you're gonna notice here is I have some baby wipes. The baby wipes are to remove any impurities on the outside of the surface before we dip them into the Windex and then before we put them into the actual uh, process tank. So the only thing that I'm missing that I just remembered was some water. So let me fill up a container with some water and I'm gonna bring you guys right back and we're gonna go ahead and move forward. All right, I do apologize about that. There just happens to be a lot of things here and I forgot one. This is um, just a glass of water out of the tap and it's cold, that's why it's purple in this color changing cup of my son's. And we're gonna go ahead and just stick it on this lid so it doesn't go all over the place. So let's just kind of re-move this over here and give it a new home. We're gonna actually move this plate over here. I don't know if you guys can catch it on the camera. I'm not sure where the table ends. And we're gonna actually move this over here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using the cold water just to do a seal on it. So basically once we run it through the process, which uses electric to bring the color to the surface, we're just gonna chill it. And basically that will just seal it. Um, it's not really required in titanium. You could just leave it be, but I happen to do it anyways because one, I try to get the chemicals off of it so they stay off of my hands. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna run some raw ones, okay? So that process is, that one's kind of a rough retainer. We're gonna take a baby wipe. We're just gonna wipe it down. Basically, we just wanna get all the oil, grease, grime, junk off of it, um, dust, all that good stuff. So we're gonna try to get as much off of it as we can. And once we get as much off of it as we can, we're gonna take and put it onto our little clip that we have here. So what we have is, this is, a, this is a titanium wire, as is everything else in here, and we're just gonna run it on here. So basically that is going to just, uh, we're using titanium for everything that's going in the solution, whether it's the ground or the positive, and of course the part. So we're gonna dip it into here, just to kind of get it all off of where it needs to be. Then we're gonna go ahead and hook it onto our power lead, like so. We're not gonna touch this because it won't feel good. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. And one of the reasons why I want to turn it on without it being in the liquid is we don't want there to get any um, incorrect voltages. We want the machine, the power supply, to get up to current, and then we would put it in. We don't want it to lead up to current. So we're running at about 14.7 right now, so I'm going to adjust this up some. 29.1 is where we're running. So we're going to go ahead and put this in here. adjust this current some more. I think I'm a little low. Well, 
or at least low for this size of piece of titanium. Okay, so we kind of acquired like a purplish color, it's supposed to be a blue. We're not really getting where we want to be. We're going to go ahead and shut that off. It ended up being at around 46 volts. Um, this is a 60 volt, 5 amp power supply. We're going to go ahead and just run that through the, um, the, the water there. And I'm just going to kind of show you where we are with it. So basically, we're kind of like maybe a blue, but we're kind of more like a purple. It's really faint. This is a pace racing one. You probably can't see it, but there's writing on the back. So that's, that's we're gonna go into the raw pile, okay? And just to make sure that we haven't missed anything or skipped anything, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn our voltage back down. Usually you're, it's more around, on this particular setup that I'm doing, you're usually more around 25, 26 volts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add a little bit more borax into it, make sure that I'm not, um, you know, basically just running it through water with nothing else. So we're basically just gonna super saturate it again. We do not have to do this normally. Um, I'm just curious if maybe I didn't put enough in the first time while I'm just thinking about everything's in this video. So basically we're just gonna, we're gonna super saturate it again. This might be a lesson for some of you. So if you're doing this and you're not getting the results you want, you may not have primed your, your liquid to the super saturation level. So we're gonna do the exact same thing we did. We're gonna go ahead and just grab roughly the same size retainer. We're gonna go ahead and Clean it. Now that we're pretty much all clean where we want to be, we'll do the same thing we've already done. Go ahead and hook it onto our titanium piece of wire. Make sure there's no uh, grease, oil, or any of that good stuff on our hands. We'll go ahead and kick it on. We are getting about the same results. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, about thirty-eight five is where we're running at right there. I'm pretty pleased with that. I like it for for what we're getting. We're just going to keep bringing it up. Forty-two. Okay, so we're kind of getting out of the scale now. We're getting we're getting back into the white. So what happens is after you go into like the purplish blue, it starts getting lighter colored again. And then after it's lighter color, what ends up happening is it goes to like a yellow. So we're gonna go ahead and just put it in the water. Let's pull it back out. Let's go ahead and show you what we have here. So we are getting some bluish tint to it in comparison to to what they are normally. So once again, let's go ahead and just put that on the raw section. Now the next one we're going to do is we're going to run it on the uh, regular piece of titanium, okay? Nothing that's been cleaned or etched with the other process. We're going to go ahead and put this into our liquid etch. And my experience has been that if we run it into the liquid etch and then we put it into the Windex, we remove some of the stuff off the outside of it or it's possible it's just closing the pores. Um, we don't necessarily want that, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and skip this process. We're going to go from here right to here. And I know there's going to be a lot of questions about the makeup of this and what is it and how does it work and all those other kind of cool things. Um, I had to walk across the garage. I, did, I, I got a, um, basically a wooden stick that I'm going to run through the inside of here. I don't want to get the etch on my hands. So... Um, actually, we'll skip that. You know, we're gonna go ahead and just put put it right on the wire, and we'll just run it right from the wire. Not a big deal. So, let's go ahead and get this rolling. Just want to get it where it's gonna, gonna work. Okay, so the idea here is to soak your titanium inside of the etch. And what's going to happen is it's going to sit here for a little while. And there's no real specific time that you need to do this for. 
you're actually waiting for uh, certain results in the etch itself. So what we're waiting for is the outside of the material will start to turn kind of bubbly. Not the material itself, but they'll actually get like little, what appears to be like little oxygen bubbles on the outside. I'm sure it's not oxygen, but that's the best way I can describe it. So we're going to wait. Um, and uh, let me bring you guys back when, actually I'm not going to bring you back. We are to the point where it's already producing bubbles on the outside. And when I get it to my liking, I'll pull it out and then we'll, we'll run it. So what we don't want to do, since we are hooked up to the lead, is we don't want to kick this on. It's not going to be, make any difference because it's inside of a container um, that would be insulated from the table, but we're just not going to do that. So we're about where we want to be, roughly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull this out. Okay. We're immediately going to go ahead and kick this on, and then we're going to go ahead and color. And I lost it. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off. We're just gonna go ahead and stick this back on here. Perfect, not a problem. But if if you lose if you if you lose it when you're doing it, you gotta go back fishing again. You gotta pull it out. If you don't get that thing pulled out of there, it's not gonna do anything. You must have both contacts on it in order to achieve what you're after. So we're pretty much where we want to be. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this out. Turn that off. We're gonna go ahead and seal it. A little bit of water here. And this one looks more like this. Much, much deeper blue. Um, one thing I can tell from looking at this, and it's hard to see, and we're going we're gonna to do a review. We're going to go outside and we're going to look at these things. But one of the things that I can tell is that there was some areas that weren't cleaned as well as what they should have been. And... Um, you know, let's see if we can get a better example on that, on that next one. So that would be liquid etch. Let's go ahead and grab another one. Let's go ahead and clean it. This time, I think what I'm going to do is let it etch a little bit longer, just slightly. And I'm going to run it in the Windex before it goes into the etch. So if there, are, if it does have any fingerprints on it, it'll pull those fingerprints off before um, you know before the etching process so once again we don't want to run it in there afterwards because it just doesn't work like it should so let's go ahead and just try to run it through here a little bit and we're just going to be patient and let this one sit in the etch if i can get it down deep enough in here i may just have to hold this one it usually doesn't take too long to to have the etch go to work and this etch is um is used so there's a chance that some of its some of its uh level of uh toxicity i guess as you want to call it probably isn't working like it should it's probably not quite as potent as as a fresh batch would be um so that might be one of the reasons why it's usually quite a bit faster than this but that's okay Okay, so we're starting to see those bubbles form. This time I'm gonna let it um, go a little longer on the piece. Yeah, we're really getting some bubbles this time. If you let it go too long, what's gonna happen is the piece is gonna turn dull gray and it's not gonna color correctly. So there's like a fine line of where it needs to, to etch and it needs to, then it needs to get out of the etching bath. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this out much darker than it was before. It might be hard for you guys to see that, um, but the piece itself is darker than it was when it first went in, which is exactly what we're after. Yeah, I'm liking this one a lot. Okay, so it slipped off again. 
probably it's time for me to make a new hook. I'll go ahead and shut it off. Let's go ahead and pull it out. And let's go ahead and just uh, run under the water. Let's go ahead and pull that out. And one of the things that I'm going to do is, I don't think I have any paper towels out here, but I will use a wipe and wipe this one down so we can get a little more true color off of it. It's still going to look a little bit wet, but actually that's not true. Down here, down here I have um, some kind of like a cheesecloth. I should really use this to, to get it dry. Okay. So. much 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 darker than what we were getting you know with the with the raw once again this is the raw 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 is on the left and etched is on the right same grade titanium different process so let's go ahead and put these down let's move forward so we're going to try to run two samples on each so basically um we're going to move on to the the etched tumbled uh, pieces so it's it is a different process so what we're gonna do is the same thing um, if you're under if you're curious what that process is basically this goes into a tumbler with a special media and then it basically tumbles for X amount of time once that time is up you will not achieve any better results it just quits so basically once the service has been etched to a certain degree there's no there is no reason to continue running it in there because you won't achieve anything um, and that's all you know a formula so what we're going to do is the same thing. We, in, if you want to see before I do this, and it's hard to tell because these are dirty, but this one's not too bad. The left is tumbled. The right is not tumbled. So you can see there's a different, this is much brighter. It's much, it's got a much uh, more of a sheen to it than, than, the, than the traditional, which is more like, I'm not going to say matte, but it's, like, it's just dull. So let's go ahead and, now that my fingers are, have been all over it, Let's go ahead and put it in here. Let's just try to get it cleaned up. There's no set time that it has to be in here either. I just find that um, giving it, you know, a, a couple of seconds hit is pretty good. It's all it really needs. Let's go ahead and kick this on. We're gonna keep the voltage where it is, which is that we're at 28, um, 1, 28, 2, we're fluctuating a little bit. And we're gonna run it. And what you're gonna find out is that different etches allow it to achieve a different color at a different voltage. They're, they're similar, but they're not the same. So if you're after a blue versus a purple or a, you know, a deep yellow versus a kind of like a washed out yellow, you're going to find that different thicknesses of metal and different processes are not the same. So the formula isn't the same the exact time unless you're running the exact same thickness diameter pieces and same grade titanium every time. Um, they'll be close. They won't be off by much. Um, but they will be off by a little bit, so and, and that's where it comes into amperage. You need to make sure you have a machine that can handle the amperage um, to accommodate the piece. So the bigger the piece, the more amps you need in order for the draw to go through it. So that's just how that works. So we're going to, once again, as I've said several times, we're going to take these outside when we're done. This is a tumbled etched titanium. Let's go ahead and run another one of these. I'm sorry this video is becoming longer and longer and more and more drawn out. I apologize. Um, hopefully it's informative. If it is informative, you know, shoot me a message on the bottom of the comment section and just say, I don't care how long they go, I want to know. And then, you know, then I'll know that I'm on track. If you want them to be shorter, I can make them shorter, but at the end of the day, you might lose some of the information. And hopefully there's a few of you people out there that are actually using some of this information and uh, want to try some of this stuff yourself. I did have a, a rant video earlier this week that was about, you know, just companies taking stuff from me and not really giving anything back. Um, I understand that that's a double-edged sword when I'm educating you guys on how to do some of this. I understand that. But there's a difference between a home user wanting to do something and try something and experiment with something and different from a company actually turning a profit and trying to actually, you know, make a living on it. So those are two different things. So I hope, I hope that you guys have become somewhat educated uh, a little bit more when you watch my videos. Um, maybe you'll see you know, that I don't do everything right. I mean, there, I, I learn just like the rest of you guys do. So 
you know, it's one of those things that at the end of the day, we're all just kind of learning together. Like for instance, this one is more of a purple and less of a blue. It's the same voltage. It's probably slightly thicker. I'm going to crank up the voltage just a little bit on this. Let's just see if we can get it back into that blue color. And there's also a possibility that my wire, my titanium wire needs to probably be replaced. It's um, probably worn out and probably scaled, scaled up on the outside of it when it goes into the actual bath. So it's probably not getting that awesome connectivity like it should be getting. So we're going to bring this back down. We're going to shut it off. We're going to soak it. Go ahead and pull that off. So this one is a little bit lighter. Not by a lot, but it is a little bit. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time. I'm, I'm looking at the clock on the on the ticker right now, realizing that we're getting up there. So the last one is we are going to go with a tumbled etched and then a liquid etch, and then we'll, we'll run it. So let's go ahead and get that started. Okay, so we are already tumbled etched. We don't have to do anything with that part. We're gonna do a clean. Then we're gonna go to a liquid etch. And we should be looking at a minute or two. While we're waiting, I do appreciate you guys watching my videos. Um, like I said before, earlier in this video, hopefully you guys learned something subscribers, likes, follows, that kind of stuff's pretty cool, you know? I like that kind of stuff. So, if you're new to the game, you haven't seen my stuff before, you want to just see more of it. If you have seen it before, but you want to see more of it, um, you know, hit subscribe. So when that stuff comes out, you, you know, you get notified of that. So, we're um, forming some bubbles on the outside here, so we're getting close. real close. Okay, so you know how this works. Basically, going to go ahead and kick this on and get it right in. Okay, we're all set there, off. Back onto the uh, sealant part here with just some water. And that came out super nice. Once again, I don't want this, this video to get super, super, super long. So let's go ahead and run one more of these and then we'll discuss. But so far, the last one that we just did right there, it's superior than the rest. And like I've said in some of my other videos, you know, if you're not learning while you're doing it, you're doing it wrong. You know, I'm I'm out here learning this. I mean, I may be farther ahead than some of the other people, but you know, every time I'm doing this, I'm still, you know, talking about putting it into the, the into this solution and then into there and don't go back into here and then go into here. You know, it's all those little things that you take note of that set you apart from whether, you know, you're just another guy doing it or are you a company or are you, you know, are you the good guy doing it um, versus just the regular guy doing it. If you didn't know, you may be able to find me on Google. Before I was NC Engravers, I actually went by the name Unknown Pro, uh, one word. So you can actually search Unknown Pro, and then after that you can put the word laser or CNC, and you will probably find me um, in some of my old work. So that's kind of cool. If some of you didn't know that, I've got lots of pictures. Not so many videos you won't probably find, but I've got a lot of pictures that are out there of a lot of different projects. Yeah, I think it's time to make us a new fish hook here because we are losing it. So, oh, you know what we forgot? I'm getting over here talking to you guys. I'm not gonna remake this video, I told you I don't do it. I forgot to etch this. Matter of fact, you know what, let's, let's use this as a learning process. This is sealed, right, or we're gonna seal it right now. Let's use this as a learning process here. This went from tumbled into here do you degreased. I skipped this process because I'm not paying attention and that sounds truth. Then it came over here and then we sealed it. Now let's go back and talk about how to remove it. So what you're gonna find 
there's two different ways you can remove anodizing from basically anything. You can either run it into a um, an etch and it'll peel it off. If you run it into a tumbler-based etch with media, you won't achieve the, the removal that you'd like. So really the only way to, to really remove the material is to run it into a liquid etch. Um, or you could sand it. You can run it under a sandblaster, or you can run it under a, a bench grinder, or whatever you want to do. But what you're going to find is that if you leave it in here long enough, it will peel the color off the outside itself, and you can restart the process. And we'll do that. So, you know, I'm at fault. I'm over here telling you that, you know, you need to learn as you do it and as you go, and I'm guilty. So I'm no, I'm no better than, you know, other people. So, you know, I don't want to portray or come off as I'm one of these people that's like, some end-all, be-all, know-it-all. That's, that is not me, like, it's not. So, um, but I do try to do things the right way. So, if I'll anodize something and I don't like the way it has come out, then I will, uh, you know, I'll start the process over. And this is one way that you can do that. You have to use a, an etch. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, and they're probably thinking, I'm gonna write it. You're thinking, can I just figure out what this etch is, because I'd like to use it. Um, this etch is, just one of those things that I've created with a couple of different products to, to make this work. It is, um, it's not a store-bought and etch. It's something that I did buy some store-bought and etch and then I found out what was in it and what the major components were and then I found out those major components were in other things. So what you can do is you can take a gallon of water and you can mix um, two or three other things to it at a certain ratio and you'll, you'll create your own etch. Um, so, but you've got to get it right. If you end up doing it too strong, it'll actually kind of hit the outside of the titanium before it actually opens the pores. And the other way around as well. Otherwise, if you do it too, too weak, you'll be sitting here for, you know, an hour and a half trying to get it to open the pores. So there's a, uh, there's a small window, as I say sometimes, there's a small, small window of opportunity to actually do it the correct way, and there's a, there's a huge um, opportunity to do it the wrong way. So it's just one of those. So what we're doing is we're getting those bubbles. I know you guys can't, probably can't see that, but we are back to the original color of what a normal, kind of like a normal titanium retainer would look like. Not so much the high bright color, but we're not gonna get that anyhow because once we're running it through the etch, we're always gonna get that dull gray. So what we've done is we've, um, <clears throat> we have almost gotten to the point where I'd like to see it. We can just give it a little bit longer. I apologize that this video is taking longer than what it should, but at the end of the day, hopefully even one of you realizes, um, you know, that sometimes processes take longer than what they normally do and that we just have to work through them. So, but hey, you can always click that X, hit the back button, click a different video. Um, you don't have to watch it, so. <clears throat> let's, um, let's run it. Yeah, I like that a lot, like a real lot. I'm actually going to stop this at purple because I want to show you guys the difference in some of the colors. It's somewhat of a bluish purple. And that's not, this is not the right way to do it. The way I did it is not even remotely the right way I should have done that. You want to get to the right voltages. You want to actually stop at the right voltages. You don't, you don't want to pull it out midway because you get like a rainbow effect. So this is more like a bluish purple. Looks more blue than purple, but, um, Man, it looks good. So what I'm gonna do now is, well, let's show it to you. I'm gonna take this outside, okay? So you guys can actually see it. And I'm gonna leave them in the order that we did them in right here. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and take this outside and we'll just do a real quick recap of them. All right, so everything is in the same order that we basically just ran it in. So what you're gonna find is that your raw material that you're gonna get with like a battery and a bucket of borax um, with a little bit of water in there is very dull. It's almost so dull that it's not even noticeable. It's like a, kind of just like an oily film on the outside. And it's not really that even, you know, like this, like you can see it's not, it's just not that even from what it should be. The liquid etch does a pretty good job, but you gotta make sure the etch is in there long enough to get to where you want it to be. That's, um. Otherwise, you're just not gonna achieve that color you're after. The etch from the tumbler does fairly decent. You can see it's more of like a shiny um, blue, but it, but it is there. I mean, it's not like an oily blue. I mean, it's, it's solid, it's there, it's not gonna rub off. Um, this is something that you want maybe on like a more of a flashy part. 
you know that's not that's not too bad um, same thing with that one they're about the same the top one is the one that we did that was etched it was tumble etched and then um, and then it was liquid etched and it's it's got a real deep color to it so much of the fact that my you can see on the inside here you got a little bit of purple so my voltages were off they should have been adjusted and changed that's not correct but the color is good and if I would have left it in there longer um, probably even change my fish hook a little bit because I'm sure I'm losing some voltage through it because it's it's scaled over we would have gotten a better result and then of course we have this one which was a mistake that went from you know and it basically ended up going from uh, it's it went from being tumbled to being Windex to being you know anodized to being sealed to being removed the anodized to back to anodized to back to seal and you see what you'll notice is that when it's wet it's kind of blue and when it's dry, it's kind of purple. So we, we're kind of in between colors here. And if you actually take and you spray something like this with oil, and you, it, it'll seal itself over time to whatever the natural color is while it's wet. So if you, if you get more of a wet color and it's more of a blue, then you're gonna get more of a blue over time and you're gonna get less, less of, a, um, of a purple color. So, and we can actually well, I don't have time. I was gonna say, if I had time on this video, I'd actually shoot a little bit of oil on there and I would actually show you. But you can just use something just as simple as like Remington gun oil. It's nothing major. Just keep it, just keep it oiled for like a week and then it'll, it'll end up holding that color. So, you know guys, thanks for watching. Um, took the time out of my day. I wanted to show you something new, maybe something you haven't seen before. Maybe just show it in a different light. You see lots of anodizing videos, but you don't necessarily see them done with different, you know, individual processes. Um, and, and how they're done so hit that subscribe button um, choose the choose the like if you like the video if you want to see more um, go to Facebook I'm posting stuff on Facebook all the time um, so yeah it's just one of those things where I've got new content coming out and if you enjoy it you know awesome so I'll keep putting it out and I'm gonna not try to do everything gun related I want to do some other titanium stuff like this um, and just some other I've got a couple other things that I do offer that most people don't know about so this is something that some of those 1911 guys that make the titanium gun handles um, or grip handles, I should say, this is like right up your alley for you know lasering a pattern on it and getting a color, um, getting in a color back to you. And we'll probably do another titanium anodizing video with higher voltages and get throughout the spectrum of the of the colors because only some of the colors can be achieved with an etch and um, you know like some of the greens and stuff so I want to show you that entire process if you're up for it so let me know in the comment section and um, hey guys just thanks for watching again and I'm gonna catch you on the next video bye